Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today we are looking at a laptop. And this is a really cool one because normally I don't get to look at stuff this new. This is an Aero 15 from Gigabyte. There we go. Uh, other than this uh, wonderfully uh, kind of holographic looking text, uh, the box is pretty no frills. It lists some specs on the side and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, this is a older model. This is the Aero 15 X8. However, as we talk about it in this video, there's actually quite a bit of savings to be had if you're picking up one of these uh, new or refurbished, especially right now with the launch of the latest ones that have the 9th gen processors from Intel and of course the 20 uh, series from Nvidia. Anyway, let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we find inside. So this box has been previously opened. It is not a brand new machine. Uh, what, from what I understand, when this was purchased, uh, it was purchased from a person that needed a Mac and for whatever reason didn't bother to return this one. I don't really understand that. Anyway, uh, inside, this is pretty much how you'd expect it to come from the fact this mach machine is actually rather big. I'm gonna have to zoom out eventually, but it's, uh, this is a model that is black. It's matte black, it can come in colors, but if you're like me, you don't want to have that gamer stigma or that gamer aesthetic being inherently obvious. And the Arrow was actually on my short list of machines to get when I was researching the Surface Book 2. And the only reason that it, and I hesitate to use the word lost, uh, was warranty and availability uh, and also the size. It was a little bit bigger than what I, what I needed, but anyway. That's neither here nor there. We'll put that off to the side for the moment. And then our first tray is removable. The center tray is got the original receipt and it's got uh, some information on it that I will not read out loud. Uh, however, it looks like this was purchased in uh, 2018 in November and it was an open box purchase uh, and it was about 2100 Canadian dollars uh, and that was before or, or pardon me that was after the 10% off so anyway uh, let's see what else we've got hiding out in here uh, so if we lift this up we've got our, our drivers and our manuals and our cards which is lovely and apparently in these things we've actually got our AC adapter parts. So if we reach inside of here we have our universal end and if we go over to the other side and reach our hand down we have our power supply and this thing is really beefy and sizable. <laughs> I might actually have to throw that on the scale. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and put all of this off to the side. That's everything out of the boxes. And let's tidy up and see what we've got. So before we get too carried away, let's just do a little bit of weighing. I'm really curious to know how much this power supply actually weighs. And it's like half a kilogram. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, for those of you that like to travel light, that could be important to know. Uh, that is, like I was weighty coming out of the box, um, and it's, it, yeah, not light. Uh, let's go ahead and weigh our laptop. So the laptop is just over two kilograms in weight. So if we add the adapter together, I'm sure you can do the math, but we can also just physically like just put it right on top. We're gonna have around two and a half kilos or approximately this many pounds, or I could just go here, I guess. Uh, it's five pounds, 11 ounces. That's, that's a lot of machine. Um, so if you are thinking about uh, thin and light, eh, maybe not the last part, but it is definitely thin. Our port selection is also really great. We've got one of those expand, expandable uh, network jacks, USB 3, HDMI, display port, uh, headphone microphone combo jack, nothing along the back. And on this side, we have two USB 3.0 parts, Kensington lock, charging, and Thunderbolt 3. 
which is sorely lacking on some laptops, and a micro SD card reader. So in terms of connectivity, this thing literally has, I think, everything that you would want. Uh, so the lid is pretty sturdy with minimum flex. And on the inside here, we can see uh, some of our uh, specifications listed on our sticker. Thin bezel, very thin indeed. One Thunderbolt 3. This can actually run, I believe, three uh, displays at once. It does have an RGB backlit keyboard, and they sport an all-day battery life. The battery is 94 watt hours, and they say an average of 10 hours, so it's not all day, but it is still pretty good for the specs that you're getting uh, stuffed into this unit. Uh, the specs are down here, but I'll just quickly read them off to you. So we are running in this an i7-8750H. We have in this unit a 15.6-inch uh, Full HD IPS display. They did come in a UHD model as well, but those are more expensive and your battery life is going to take a pretty significant hit. Uh, you have 16 gigs of DDR4-2666 RAM. And what else do we need to know? Oh, of course, the uh, GTX 1078GB uh, video card. So you can do some pretty heavy lifting with this. And I have to say, the screen is very, very beautiful. Uh, even turned off, it is a Pantone certified display, so your color accuracy is quite good indeed. And we do have a nose camera down here because the bezels are just too dang thin. And I think, I'm not sure, I'll find out when I turn it on, that it actually does support Windows Hello, which to me is like one of the best login features there. Uh, the keyboard font is a little weird. It's not something that you would normally see. And you do have the full numpad. And this is one of the reasons why this laptop wasn't in my running, because I don't need, I don't want that. I'd much rather have something more compact. Uh, the chassis is rigid. There's like practically no uh, real flex. The back here follows a, a MacBook style design with uh, your vent uh, exhaust going out that way. And then your fan intake is through the bottom. So you do want to be uh, mindful of that if you are using this on a surface like uh, a couch or blanket or anything fabric because it will uh, suck in here and get uh, dirty quite quickly and there are two fans that are pushing it uh, out through. Uh, this does have a two-year warranty so if it was purchased in 2018 then that means that there's actually a little bit of warranty left. Uh, you can always tell the warranty with a Gigabyte laptop, at least the newer ones, with the warranty sticker located on the bottom. So that's actually kind of nice to know. I'll have to let the owner know that his laptop is still under warranty. Uh, at any rate, let's go ahead and, I guess, since we have it flipped over, uh, look on the inside. So these do not use a standard bit. They do appear to be a Torx, I think it's a T5. So let's just do a quick uh, friction test. Yep, that is, a, that is a T5. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen these up and see what we can see on the inside. I should mention uh, before anyone <laughs> mentions it, uh, because I didn't film it, you want to make sure that you are disabling the internal battery in the BIOS before disassembling a computer that does not have a externally removable battery. So please make sure that you are doing that to avoid accidental electrical discharge, because that would not be a good thing. So there are three screws on the center of the case that on this particular model came with uh, little stickers over the screws. And I thought initially that this was like some kind of warranty thing, uh, but further reading online goes to show that no, it has nothing to do with the warranty, so you don't need to worry about punching the holes in them. In fact, there's a video on Gigabyte's YouTube channel that literally shows uh, this exact process being done to upgrade the RAM. And obviously you can't really do that unless you puncture the holes in those screws. So once that's done, we have to go ahead and gently pry the actual casing uh, off. And this is best done, of course, with a plastic pry tool, if you have one, or a credit card. Okay, with all the clips finally popped, and it is a snug fit, we can go ahead and remove this bottom cover. Now, on the inside, 
even though it's a 16 gig, we still have another uh, bay of RAM free, which is really awesome that they didn't do two sticks of eight. So you can just drop in another a 16 and go on your merry way. So we do have our battery taking up, uh, I would say about a sizable third. Our downward firing speakers are located uh, on the edges of it, which are uh, no real surprise there. We do have our M2 MVME uh, 500 gigabyte hard disk sitting right there. And we have our second bay available for a second drive if we so chose. So that's really nice that they have two bays and that they are using literally every inch of space that they've got uh, to put stuff in here. The two fan system and heatsink pipe actually reminds me a lot of my old MacBook Pro, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, the fans are asymmetrically shaped, which should reduce uh, fan noise uh, under extreme load. We've got our battery connector over here and a series of other connectors that uh, shove everything under the board. And everything else seems pretty darn organized. Anything that you need to get access to is hanging out right here. And I believe we've got our Wi-Fi card down here. So really they've made everything that you can upgrade uh, easily accessible by popping the bot, pa uh, the bot panel, the bottom panel off. Uh, the bottom panel is uh, made out of a metal, which means it is flexible and hopefully uh, should be quite durable. Uh, just keep that in mind as you are removing it because it will uh, bend and feel quite differently than say removing a plastic bottom cover. Other than that, there is really not a whole lot uh, to say about what we see here. It's pretty clear that this thing was unlikely uh, really used at all. Uh, just based on the little amount of dust and dirt buildup that we see on the inside of it. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and reassemble it and just walk through a few more features, turn it on and use it. So the first thing that's really neat is if you actually look at the lights at the bottom here and you double right click, it'll actually show you how much charge the battery has. And if all these lights light up, you know that you're pretty much sitting at a full charge, so you don't even need to turn the machine on to know if you've got full battery, which is just kind of a, a quirky and neat uh, feature there. So let's go ahead and just adjust our camera angle ever so slightly and turn it on. Well, you can't argue with that boot time. That is something else. All right, trackpad is very clean, very crisp. The press down to actuate is a bit stiff. Um, I don't know if that's something I would personally like. One thing that is worth mentioning is that the ELAN drivers that come default with this trackpad are not so great. That being said, there's a lot of ways that you can install Windows Precision drivers and have a much better experience, uh, including actually having working gestures. Uh, the Elan driver just doesn't do that, and that oh, that would annoy me so much. So, uh, if you are looking at what getting one of these things, just be prepared for that out of the box. That it, it's not going to come with that, and it is definitely worth getting the Precision driver uh, just so you can have like gestures you know, like it's 2019 and not like the Stone Ages. Initial impressions are pretty good. Uh, the screen is very nice with, uh, I might say that it is a little susceptible to glare, even being a matte display. If we crank up our brightness, let's see what that does for us. Uh, I think our drivers, uh, because this is a fresh version of Windows, I think our drivers might be missing for that. Another thing worth mentioning is that you do need a smart manager, smart utility software to actually have your function keys operate, which is kind of a letdown if I'm honest with you, that uh, some of the stuff just is not built into, say, the Windows environment. There might be a way to get the drivers uh, to do otherwise, but from a stock Windows 10 install, uh, the uh, 
pretty much any of the function keys did not work. So if you want them to work like brightness up and down, uh, your fan control, uh, maximum and normal, all the stuff, if you want it to work, uh, you do need to install those drivers. So depending on who you are and how you're using this, that could be a bit of a deal breaker with you. So viewing angles are good, but again, a little bit of outside sun uh, puts a pretty significant glare on that display. Uh, running the display at 100%, our battery life is now going up to 11 hours, so it seems to be calculating that on the fly. Uh, like I said, this seems to uh, be looking pretty... One thing I can tell you immediately is I am not used to uh, big keyboards like this, but I am glad to see that the trackpad is centered uh, in line with uh, more or less the space bar and not like the center of the chassis because that can be a huge pain if they try to uh, center the trackpad with the entire keyboard. That can be a bit of a nuisance. One thing that is worth mentioning is that your Gigabyte logo on the back does light up, so just keep that in mind that it is an aesthetic uh, that you will either love or hate. So I guess we can draw a couple of conclusions here. Uh, we've got a lot of power in a very small and thin package, but not light. Uh, it has a lot of stuff to enjoy. It's got a 15 and a half, or pardon me, 15.6 inch uh, full HD display, not 4K, but again, for the sake of the battery life, that is totally okay in my opinion. Uh, we do have a nose cam, like pretty much everything that you would absolutely need on a laptop, and even most desktops is sitting right here in front of me. Uh, lots of ports, lots of connectivity, really good hardware. The person that I think that would really enjoy this is uh, really two people. If you own no desktop computer and you don't need a desktop computer, this would be a pretty good purchase. I think the other person that would really enjoy this is the person that's never home to enjoy their desktop computer. Therefore, they've got this. They can do pretty much whatever they want on it. And the reason that I think this particular unit is so interesting is actually the price. So I did a little bit of quick market research and I found that if you wanted to buy one of these brand spanking new, not a very good deal. They're about 3,000 Canadian dollars. The one with the 2070 is about $100 more. So it's pretty obvious if you're buying these new, you want to go and actually get the latest version. That being said, if you're buying them used, I think that's where the savings can really be had here. So even when this was being sold as an open box unit, it was around $2,200, uh, Canadian, mind you. And then if you wanted to buy, say, a refurbished one directly from Gigabyte, it's about $2,150 Canadian, or around $1,699 US dollars. So it's significantly cheaper to buy them used than brand new, even though... The, if you were buying new, the difference between this and the old one, or pardon me, this and the new one, is about $100. So if you don't mind buying uh, used stock or used inventory, and understanding that your warranty will not be there or uh, be on its last legs, uh, there is a savings of potentially anywhere from 50% uh, uh, if you're buying it from another individual or you're buying it from a refurbisher. So that is something to keep in mind. If you're looking for a lot of power in a uh, thin package that you can really do a lot with, everything from gaming to VR to video production, it'll, it'll pretty much do everything that you need to at some capacity. It might not be the fastest, but it'll definitely do it. At any rate, if you've got any questions about this machine or anything that I've talked about or featured, please feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below and I will do my best to get back to you or I'll even ask the owner once it goes back to him uh, how he's finding it. Uh, with that being said, thank you very much for watching. I would encourage you to like, share, subscribe, and if you are subscribing, hit that notification bell as well just to make sure that you're not missing any of the new video content that is going to be coming out on the channel. Uh, this month and in the future. Thank you very much for tuning in and I will see you next time.